In this tutorial, I am going to show you a very small little tip that takes a wildlife photo from this to this. And it's just one tiny little change and it's the eyes. And I've got a couple of techniques that I think are really going to help you bring out one of the most important parts of your wildlife photos, which is the eyes and really help make those stand out in your photos if they don't in the beginning. Okay. My name is Matt Laskowski. Let's go dive in and get started here. So here is a photo that I took of a, a bird while walking around one morning and, and from an editing standpoint of overall tone, all it really needs is just exposure. Okay. It just needs to be overall a little bit brighter. Okay. The, the problem I have with it is that even doing that and getting it to where I think tonally it should be to me, the eye looks really dark. Okay. Um, we can get into debates on whether or not in nature and this particular bird and what the eye should look like. And if you are in, in wildlife photography for journalistic purposes, perhaps that should be something that you should be looking at. If the, the people are publishing this in books and journals and things like that, I am not, I am in it purely for aesthetic purposes. And to me, this eye is too dark. So I need to brighten it. Problem is, is that exposure are, are shadows. The, the only other thing I could really do would be shadows and I could crank up shadows and, and I like the way the eye looks better. The, the issue is, is it flattens out the entire photo. Brute force strength of shadows rarely works well in, in any situation here. So I'm not going to crank up the shadows. What I would do is hop up here to one of these three tools, which if you've ever heard me talk about them, I consider them to be the most powerful tools inside of Lightroom, the brush, the radial gradient or the linear gradient. I would gladly give up everything in Lightroom if you just left me with these tools. So I'll double click the word effect, which is just a quick way to reset all of the sliders. And then I'll press command or control plus to zoom in, which is the same keyboard shortcut that in most Adobe applications to zoom in and out. And what I'll do is I'll increase the exposure a little here. We saw that shadows work pretty well, so I'll crank that up. What you'll also find are texture uh, can work well, and you'll also find you can crank up the sharpness a little bit too. We do have a little bit of a catch light there, and I think all of this will just accentuate it. Since I'm using the radial gradient, all I have to do is click in the middle and then drag it outward like so, okay? Now I have, uh, if, I, if I move my cursor off the screen, I can get rid of that little outline so you can get an idea here. And then there's a, a little, uh, little toggle switch at the very bottom of that panel that I can then turn the adjustment off and then back on. Now for me, it's probably a little bit too bright. So I'll dial that back a little bit. Uh, we can even go do a little bit of noise reduction in it, just crank up the noise slider, and that might get rid of a little bit of that noise. You will have to battle a little bit with sharpness. So for me personally, um, I know the pixel peepers out there are gonna sit there and say, well, it looks a little bit noisy. When, when, you, when you look at it on a screen, you'll never see it, and when you print it, um, it'll never, it'll, it'll smooth out in the print. So I personally wouldn't do any noise reduction onto it because I know that nobody would ever see that noise in there. But you just adjust these between shadows and between exposure, you can get yourself to a point where that eye really pops. And it, it's a tiny, tiny change. That's before, that's after. But to me, that change makes all of the difference in the world. Another one that works sometimes too is whites. You can go and you can increase the whites and that'll just boost the catch lights in the eye. It won't typically boost and, and make all the black parts of the eye darker, but it will boost some of the brighter parts in there where again and in, which that can help dramatically for. So that's before that's after. All right. Probably dial that back just a little bit. What's really nice about this is you can come up here to the effect menu and you can turn this into a preset. Okay. So if you go to the very top of the panel, you'll see effect. You can follow that over a little bit and you'll see a little pop out list that may show some of the default Lightroom presets. I've actually got a ton of presets in there. And then when we scroll to the bottom, we can see we can make a preset. However, this is a really good time for a very quick word from our sponsor, which is me about my brush and gradient preset system. If you head over to mattk.com slash brush hyphen system, and I'll make sure I put a link into the description for that. You can find my brush and gradient system, which plugs into Lightroom Classic and Photoshop Camera Raw. They're, they're for use in the adjustment brush, radial, or gradient filters on there. They actually work for all three. 
all right? And the idea behind them is, is I think those are the most powerful tools. You can see some uh, before and afters in there, but they give you different ways to work with those tools. And because I think they are so powerful, that's where I think the presets can really come in and help. You'll see there's a good representation of landscape, portrait, dodge and burn, and light type presets. And then honestly, what I think is, is probably the best part about this is it comes with over 90 minutes of tutorials, not only on how to use them, how to customize them, how to make them work for your own photos, how to really dive into some of the advanced brush settings, and then finally, how to make your own. You know, I, I, I love when people purchase presets from me, but at the same time, I pride myself on being an educator, and I wanna show you how you can make your own presets so that uh, you really learn how to use Lightroom and Photoshop. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. Let's get back to our tutorial. So what I was showing you is how to make your own preset. So we can come up here, and, um, and you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. It's gonna be, you gotta keep scrolling down there, but there's gonna be an option that says, save current settings as new preset. And then from there, I can just go in and just, uh, you know, I, I find sometimes it's helpful to put a number in front of them if it's one you're gonna use a lot because these are sorted alphabetically, but we'll just call these bird eyes. How's that? And I'll just hit create. So now I can go to another photo and I can go in here and let's just make sure I haven't done it yet. So here's another photo, uh, it's possible. I'm gonna clear it out, there we go. So again, Commander Control Plus to zoom in. I'm gonna go to my radial filter and I'm gonna choose the bird eyes preset. I probably could have come up with a better name and then just drag it out right over there. Again, you can always go in here and you can adjust those settings when you're done based on what the photo needs and you can toggle the before and the after on it and you can see the difference there. All that said, one last thing to consider is that sometimes certain birds have pure black eyes, okay? Or at least to our view. Again, I don't know the biology and, and the, the nitty gritty of all this and I'm sure someone will write a long comment to tell me, but there are, there are birds where the eyes should only appear pure, uh, pure black. You know, a lot of uh, certain owls, uh, I think a lot of owls, uh, have very, very dark black eyes. So you would wanna make sure you wouldn't do that on, on an animal like that. In this case here, if I go and I select that preset and I go in here and I, I try to drag that out, what's gonna happen is it's gonna get very, very, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more. It gets very almost milky in appearance, um, looks a little bit odd. So what I would say is in that case, pull back on the exposure, pull back on the highlights, but still the whites, maybe even crank up on the highlights, the whites, the texture, maybe even a little bit of clarity, uh, the sharpness, those things can still help add a little bit of pop. You probably wanna close that in a little bit more too, but those things can still add a little bit of, of snap and pop to the eyes. So if I toggle this off and on, it's not necessarily gonna bring out any color or anything different, but if I toggle it off and on, you can just, you can see right there, it actually does add a little bit to those eyes. And if you were showing this off, you know, would it make a big difference at this size of a photo? No, but if you were showing this off and really cropping in closely or really doing a large print, some of those adjustments can make more of an impact on your photo. So between those two things, uh, this, as I said, is, is such a small, simple little technique, but I think when it comes down to it, I think the eyes are one of the most important parts in our wildlife photography. And I think when you make a small adjustment like this, it really goes a long way.